So very quickly, just to end the presentation, and then I want to show you a vi video. I just really want to go and talk about product design at Maynooth, what we're trying to do, and other um, degrees across the country and in the UK, and what it actually entails. So it's a BSc Honours, so it's a Bachelor of Science degree. And basically, a product designer is to a product what an architect is to a building. We create and invent a new product for the mass market, something that the user wants. We use maths and science. You have to have the knowledge. There's another type of design called blue skies design, where you can invent or design anything, but it doesn't have to function. No one has to really use it, and no one has to buy it. This sort of product design, when it's scientifically based, you're inventing something that people actually want and that is functional and does work, and yet looks good at the end as well. So you learn how to sketch, to draw, and even if you have no creativity, this is my example of it. So my students come in to me at 18, I can't draw, I'm not creative. My teacher thinks I'm not creative, I'm not artistic. They're now in third year, the degree's three years old, and in third year they're rendering in 3D, they're sketching, they've got spatial awareness, they're thinking laterally, and it's just a way of teaching you how to do that. So it can be taught. So you do marketing throughout the four years, you do technology, which is all the science, maths and engineering, and then the design as well. And we, obviously nowadays most products are electronic, have some sort of electronic components. So we also teach you the basics of the electronics so you're aware of it. If you want any more details of this degree or any other product design courses or design in general, obviously your teachers can get in touch with me after. But now just to end the, the talk, I want to inspire you all. So basically, my motto in life is follow your dream. You can achieve anything if you believe in it. There'll be people along the way that say you can't do this, you can't be, you can't have that career, but follow your passion, follow your dream, and enjoy what you're doing, and you'll be successful at whatever you do. And I, I can almost guarantee that for all of you. Um, so just to end now, I want to show you a video. This is from a website called TED.com, which is for designers. It's on creativity, inspiration. And again, I just want to show you this video on Theo Janssen, who followed his passion. Again, people didn't think this would be possible, but you can tell me yourselves what you think. I would like to tell you about a project which I started about 16 years ago, and it's uh, about making new forms of life. And these are made of this kind of tube, electricity tube, we call it in Holland. And uh, we can start a film about that, and we can uh, see a little bit backwards in time. Eventually, these beasts are going to live in herds on the beaches. Theo Janssen is working hard on this evolution. I want to put these uh, forms of life on the beaches, and they should survive over there on their own in the future. Learning to live on their own, and it will take couple of more years to let them walk on their own. The mechanical beasts will not get their energy from food, but from the wind. The wind will move feathers on their back, which will drive their feet. The beast walks sideways on the wet sand of the beach with its nose pointed into the wind. As soon as it walks into either the rolling surf or the dry sand, it stops and walks in the opposite direction. Evolution has generated many species. This is the Animaris currens ventosa.
This is a herd, and <laughs> it is built according a uh, genetical code, and this is a sort of race, and each, any, every animal is different, and the, the winning code will multiply. This is a, the wave going from left to right, you can see in this one. And now it goes from, yes, now it goes from left to right. And this is a new generation, a new family, which uh, is able to store the wind. So the wings pump up air in lemonade bottles, which are on top of that. And, um, and they can use that energy in case the, ways the wind falls away and the, the tide is coming up, and they still have a little bit of energy to reach the dunes and save their lives, because they are drowned very easily. I could show you this animal. Thank you. So the proportion of the tubes in this animal is very important for the, 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 the walking. There are 11 numbers, which are called the 11 holy numbers. These are the distances of the tubes, which makes it walk that way. In, in fact, it's a, it's a new invention of the wheel. It works the same as the wheel. The axis of a wheel is uh, staying on the same level, and this hip is staying on the left same level as well. In fact, it is a better than a wheel, because when you try to drive with your bicycle on the beach, you will notice it's going very, very hard to do. And, the, and the, the, the feet just step over the sand, and the wheel has to touch every piece of the ground in between. So 5,000 years after the invention of the wheel, we have a new wheel. And I will show you in the next video. Can you start it, please? That very heavy loads can be moved. There are some, there's a guy pushing there behind, but can also walk on the wind very well. It's 3.2 tons. And uh, this is uh, working on, on the, the stored wind in the bottles. He has a feeler when it can feel obstacles and turn around. In the next shot, you see it's going to the other way. Can I have the feeler here? Okay, <laughs> good. So they have to survive all the dangers of the, of the beach. And one of the big dangers is the sea. This is the sea. And it must feel the water of the sea. And this is the water feeler. And what's very important is this tube. It, uh, it sucks in air normally, but when it's it, it swallows water, it feels the resistance of it. So imagine that the animal is walking towards the sea. As soon as it touches the water, it should, you should hear a sort of s sound of, of running air. <laughs> oh. Yes. So, if it doesn't feel, <laughs> it's, it's will be drowned, okay? Here we have the brain of the animal. In fact, it is a step counter, and it counts its, the steps. It's a binary step counter. So, as soon as it has been in, to the sea, it's, it changes the pattern of zeros and ones here. And uh, it knows always where it is on the, on the beach. So it's a very simple brain. It says, well, there's the sea, there are the dunes, and I'm here. So it's a sort of imagination of the simple world of the, the, the beach animal. Thank you. One of the biggest enemies are the storms. This is a part of the nose 
of the Animaris percipiere. And uh, when the nose is fixed of the animal, the whole animal is fixed. So when the storm is coming up, it drives a pin into the ground. <laughs> and the nose is fixed, the whole animal is fixed. The wind may turn, but the animal will turn all his, his nose into the wind. Well, another, another couple of years, and these animals will survive on their own. I still have to help them a lot. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so there you can see, just using plastic tubes, lemonade bottles, and some science, maths, engineering, and his imagination and creativity. He's actually designed these creatures that can live by themselves in families on the beach, know where the water is, know where the sand is, and actually using wind power can survive. So thank you. Thank you to everyone for coming today. I hope um, you enjoyed the talk. I hope it inspired you to be more creative or innovative or just think differently in whatever you do. And the main thing is to follow, follow your dreams, your ambitions, and just get there. And remember to work hard as well at school because it does pay off later. Thank you.